but eventually I started talking to a guy called Kevin Sullivan who had just been working from with WCW for he Clone. was one of the top guys in well obviously wrestling for years but within WCW yeah. behind the scenes he was, he, he was I think at, I think before they finished he was one of their top talent guys he would have gone talent and got, relations and, and, and got booking, talent yeah. um, but I got I got talking to him um, he at that point advised me that he would be started working with a new promotion that had been set up in America called XWF they were based in Florida um, and he says, sure, why don't you come over and chat to us and stuff like that there. So, of course, I was going over to America. I think I was going for a wedding, actually, of a friend. Um, so, took a couple of days and went Just down. Just before you go on, John, so um, your initial contact meeting with, because this is before really your social media, where it was very easy yes. to yeah. contact people in any business at all. But you obviously had a lot of contacts through your PR company, which was Get Plug PR. At yeah, the time, yes, I, 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 I had my PR company at the time, and I would have had a lot of contacts. I mentioned earlier about doing the WCW when they came to Belfast. That was through a company in London that I had contact with. Um, so I would have had a lot of contacts, and, and I think probably from, I, I can't remember the exact contact, but probably from one of the contacts when I did that um, sort of, interim work with the WCW the name obviously was back you know in in America so I got this contact and we then eventually got in contact with Kevin Sullivan and off we went exploring to see what we we could do so I went to America for a couple of days it was quite interesting um I had planned obviously just to go down and meet him from the NR and head back up to New York um ended up spending the entire day had a great day with him as um we went to his house Jake came um that I was mentioning earlier came from um, Las Vegas and um, Kevin was booking him on to the shows that they were going to have which was obviously good to help raise that profile for him and then my involvement was potentially to see uh, and the dog's still going mad isn't it just typical <laughs> you know so apologies if you're still hearing the dog it's just as you always it's all quiet until you start talking um, but anyway the um, my, they, they were interested in getting me maybe possibly to do some work with the, uh, the plan to try and uh, if I could sell um, the promotion to a TV network in the UK um, and that again would have been through some of my contacts that I would have had I would have made inquiries um, but they filmed I think four shows and then shortly after that it went it, it went belly up so yeah, so if people want to look up XWF, just put it into a Google, but I do know, um, obviously there was a lot of money put into it, there was a legitimate businessman behind it. They ran some house shows that didn't really yeah. draw, that's probably some of the shows you're talking about, they didn't really draw well. They had some TV in Puerto Rico at the time, they ran, ran a couple of shows there, but you never seen, it didn't get off the ground and there was a lot of... Uh, talent behind it. A lot of lot of big names, as I say, you know. Hulk Hogan was involved, um, wasn't he? Yeah, Hulk Hogan uh, apparently was behind it. Um, they say the shows they had some quite a big, quite a few big name stars on it. Um, and from what I heard afterwards, is they the the network just didn't want to buy. The, the, they didn't like what they were seeing in the initial shows. And I don't know whether there wasn't money to fill in more. Um, I think that might have been. The, so. Needless to say, if I had worked out with the TV promotion, you could potentially be an original promoter here for them. I, I, in order, you never know what was, you as a yes, um, never know what was supposed to what it would have happened out of that. You know, because say um, the the guy Jake I was working with at the time who had been on my shows, he actually participated in the shows. I think he filmed on two of them. Um, so you never know what could have come from that. Couple of stories there. I'll come back to one in Pat Barrett, but um, if if the guy you're talking about, Jake. Um, I know there was a lad from Las Vegas called Shooting Star. Yes. Use that name. I'm not sure if it's Jake. He worked for Scott Conway, Brian Dixon, and a few other promoters. And that would have been around 2001, 2002. And I'll always remember, I had an English guy uh, from Liverpool called Frank Casey. His nickname was The Mid. He was a referee on some of my shows, Built My First Ring. And he was a ring van guy for the first sh sh shows um, you did as, as, as part of our relationship. But... When Frank was with me, he decided to rib this guy, it was right. the same fella shooting star. And he rang up pretend, apparently this is a joke they used to do all the time over in uh, England, but he ran him up, rang him up pretending to be Bushwhacker Luke. <laughs> now, Bushwhacker Luke at the time was the booker in Puerto Rico. 
Right. So he rang him up and he was pretending to be Bushwhack Luke, offering him like so many months' work, offering him crazy good money. And I felt bad, the guy was getting all excited. So oh, you can use this reference, that reference, I'm yeah. open and write myself. <laughs> and I was just motion frank to stop, stop. This guy get his hopes up. Yeah. <laughs> He's coming to Puerto Rico for three months. Like, but uh, yeah, I, I, I always remember that. It was actually hilarious the guy was getting so into it. I know Pat Barrett, uh, I won't go on too much about Pat. He's a, a story in himself. Quite a successful wrestler from, from Dublin. But um, I remember talking to Pat and he was very fond of Kevin Sullivan. They worked a lot together in the right. old WWF and he did a bit down in Florida together. Um, so yeah, like Kevin Sullivan is a veteran as such. So it, it's just a shame that that didn't work out f f from that point of view because it, it could have been a foot in the door if XWF had it took off. Yeah, because well, as as, at that time, as I say, you know, WCW had just been axed and from the American networks. And I think the American networks were looking something else. Um, and as I say, it was just from the feedback I got, the, the, the networks they were talking to didn't like what they seen in the first shows that were filmed um, and therefore it didn't progress any further. And I'm sure probably like television companies over here, American television companies are quite ruthless, you know, so if they, I've heard of yeah. even drama shows being filmed as a pilot and, and scrapped and not ever shown. In fact, I've even heard of even entire series, you know, of show being, being not shown simply because the network didn't like it or it didn't fit to their schedule. So it was disappointing, but um, you know, it didn't deter me from carrying on and doing um, some work uh, in the business and I carried on after that. Well, um, a story f f for myself is um, dealing with Americans back in the day. I remember Vampiro trying to get me to book the Irish leg of um, Wrestling Society X. Right. And then he changed his mind a year or two later. He wanted me to be the Irish promoter for AAA in Mexico, bringing shows in. So all these guys would want to get on to you. I remember another time there was NWA. They were looking at doing shows. It was around 2002, 2001. They wanted a, an Irish promoter. There was Extreme Hardcore, which was like an ECW reunion. Yes, that's right. Yes. But you would have to pay these a substantial amount of money. And then they said, oh, well, you can keep the door. And then you'd have to fly the talent in, put, put them up, advertise the show. So a huge amount of money. But they're guaranteed a percent or that money. And if they'd want a venue that was a certain capacity and they want a percentage after a certain number. So arguments like after 2,000 people, they would want X amount of percentage of each ticket on top of the fee you're paying them, on top of all your costs. But no, I, I never went for that. It's just... Yeah.